Hello there and welcome back to another Premier League preview and it is between Brighton and Arsenal, two teams that are at different sides of the table but possibly other factors could factor into this game, possibly swing in different ways, we don't really know honestly and that is probably the best way I can start this video is with Arsenal, you just, you just don't know, you never know what's going to happen. They came up against Man City on Wednesday night and Man City are the second best team in this league right now and they're still well in the Champions League. A very, very strong, deep team. You saw that with the substitutions that they made as well with, uh, you know, the five substitutes you can make now and every single player was just, could be a first team starter for any other team in the league, pretty much. Just so many mistakes that were made in this game that Man City that Arsenal played against Man City. We can almost get rid of this form here for Arsenal because it's the Man City game that really told you the most of where they are right now and what they are doing. When they come up against Brighton, Brighton's form doesn't look great. A lot of draws, two losses against teams that are around them in the league, Palace and Bournemouth as well. Let's have a quick look at the stand-ins for each of these two teams. Arsenal, they're currently sat ninth. They are one point ahead of Burnley and Crystal Palace, three points ahead of, of Everton as well. But they are in very real danger of if things don't go their way this weekend against Brighton, who are sat in 15th in the league, 29 points, still at this moment in time, very much in touch with the relegation zone. If Brighton can pull off a draw or a victory, Arsenal will find themselves pretty quickly into the bottom half of the table again. And they've been in the bottom half of the table already before this season. I think that the lowest that they got was 13th in, in the league, possibly. May have only been 12th, but even so, it just doesn't look great for Arsenal at the moment. Now, you also have to factor in that while we can always question the quality of Arsenal's current squad and the way that it's put together, the way that it performs on the pitch, you've also got to then look at who are they going to be missing. Now, I, had, I went on Arsenal's official website and it only it only lists uh, Socrates, uh, Lucas Torreira, um, Suarez or, Su or Suarez, however you say his name, and Callum Chambers as well. Now you've also got to then factor in they lost Granite Xhaka very very early on. That does not look like a nice injury. No injury looks nice, but it doesn't look like a good one if you know what I mean. Then they also lost Pablo Mari, who was their other centre back as well. So then you take Callum Chambers, Socrates. And Pablo Mari, that's three centre-backs right there. And then you take David Luiz with a straight red. Will be missing for this game as well. So then it, it, by the looks of it, they would have Rob Holding available. And maybe they will have to put someone like Kolasinac at centre-back. Maybe because of his physicality, whatever. When he's played centre-back or in a back three for Arsenal in the past, he's never, he's never done it well. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see how they line up defensively. You then have to look offensively as well. They're not necessarily got injuries, but they've got a £72 million signing that didn't even get on the pitch with five substitutions, didn't get on the pitch against Man City. Didn't start the game, never mind any of that anyway. you got Aubameyang is being shoved out to a wing, right or left, whichever one. A young lad in Nketiah, which you can't criticise a young lad. He's just taken his opportunity as he's given it. You've got to start questioning what is the aim of Arsenal at this moment in time. Now, there is obviously going to be a quality difference between Man C coming up against Man City and coming up against Brighton. But Brighton, when they can, we saw it earlier on in the season when uh, I think they beat uh, Tottenham 3-0 when they still had Pochettino. When they play well, Brighton can really play some nice, passing fluid attacking football and I think Brighton as well they don't actually have um, any injuries I don't think from what I remember looking at normally have these preloaded but I actually didn't this time um, so let's have a look everyone fit and available they're missing is Kaedo um, Alzate and Aaron Con Connolly he's the young lad who really starred um, against Tottenham in that game as well but they'd already been suffering from long term injuries so even so you look at the form, head-to-head, -head, getting a nil-nil against Wolves as well in their last game out, obviously three months ago, for Brighton. I just feel that this is going to be a really difficult game for Arsenal. And I think that Arsenal fans are also starting to feel that as well. Like They they are seeing this, this game against Brighton. It needs to be a must-win. How do Arsenal go about winning this game? Arsenal need to go out there and they need to be putting Aubameyang up front. They need to be playing their £72 million winger 
on the right-hand side where he's meant to play. Saka played on the right-hand side against Man City, but his best work has been at left on the left-hand side as well. Play him in his proper position. And what Arsenal need to recognise as a team, if you're defensively weak, you need to go out there and basically play some classic Newcastle, Kevin Keegan football and just attack. Attack as hard as you can and try and out- outscore your opposition that is what I've said that for a long time. They need to their defense is never going to improve. David Luiz being out, you thought, oh, maybe it'll improve them, but they're missing so many other centre backs and defenders. And also like Granite Xhaka, who could be a defensive mid, but more just a midfielder, if anything. I just think that they're gonna to have to go out there, they're gonna to have to attack, play the best attackers up until they get injured. You're gonna to have to play your best team up front until you get injured. Whether that means Lacazette comes in, play Lacazette and Aubameyang two up to up front, whatever. Whatever you need to do, that's what Arsenal need to do. Brighton, on the other hand, all they need to do is contain, get possession of the football and move it quickly up front. And if they can get anywhere near Arsenal's defence, they will be able to cause problems. They will be able to cause problems. I'm going to go for a draw. I think it's going to be 1-1. I don't... I think that Arsenal will score a goal... If they play all, but now if they if they go back to type and they play like they did against Man City and they put Aubameyang on the left hand side on the wing, whatever. If they do all of that sort of stuff and they do what they did against Man City, I don't think that Arsenal will win the game. I think they might draw the game. They could also lose the game, but I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw between these two teams. Let me know what you think in the comments below. How do you think this game is going to go down? And are Arsenal, are they in real danger of getting themselves back in to the bottom half of the table? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.